Daddy to the Rescue Leviticus chapter 10, verses 1 and 2 Aaron's sons, Nadab and Abihu, took their censers, put fire in them, and added incense. And they offered unauthorized fire before the Lord, contrary to his command. So fire came out from the presence of the Lord and consumed them, and they died before the Lord. That's the New International Version. Naturally, Aaron wasn't expecting or happy to lose two sons in one day, but his hands were tied. Things probably moved very fast. His sons made a mistake and God quickly got rid of them. Aaron must have been totally blindsided. Nahab and Abihu were buried and life, ministry and everything else continued. Aaron quietly licked his wound. Now look at verses 16 to 20 of the same Leviticus chapter 10. Moses then asked them what had happened to the goat of the sin offering. When he discovered it had been burned up, he became very angry with Eleazar and Ithamar, Aaron's remaining sons. Why didn't you eat the sin offering in the sacred area? He demanded. It is a holy offering. The Lord has given it to you to remove the guilt of the community and to purify the people, making them right with the Lord. Since the animal's blood was not brought into the holy place, you should have eaten the meat in the sacred area as I ordered you. Then Aaron answered Moses, Today my sons presented both their sin offering and their burnt offering to the Lord, and yet this tragedy has happened to me. If I had eaten the people's sin offering on such a tragic day as this, would the Lord have been pleased? And when Moses heard this, he was satisfied. That's the New Living Translation. Note that Moses directed his anger and question to Aaron's surviving sons, but Aaron was the one that answered. One lesson we all can learn or be reminded of from this is that no matter how old our children are, as long as we remain alive, we still have a role to play in their lives and even in the lives of our grandchildren and as many of our descendants as the Lord helps us to see. Parenting is something you keep doing for as long as you are still breathing. Keep praying for your children. Keep counseling them. If you have children who are still struggling and trying to find their feet at an age when you would have expected them to be well established, don't be discouraged. Don't be angry with them for not moving up as fast as you would like them to. Don't compare them with their mates or their siblings who seem to be doing better. Do not try to make them feel like they are useless. Bear with them. Be patient with them. Keep blessing them. Don't get tired of being there for them. Show them the way. Help them out if they need help in any way and you are able to help. Sometimes the difference between someone who will keep pressing until he breaks through and the one who will commit suicide and end it all rests in the attitude of parents and other family members. Those who receive kind, different kinds of support from their families keep fighting until they achieve what they want, while some who receive nothing but condemning and discouraging words either take their own lives, kill their family members, unleash their wrath on innocent strangers or take to drugs and or alcohol. Just like Moses was angry with Eliezer and Ithamar, many entities are angry with your children, some for things they actually did wrong and some for no reason at all, and they try to frustrate and make those children miserable. That's the kind of world we live in. Do not make things worse for your children by also being angry with them or by keeping quiet and leaving them to face the angry mob all alone. Rather, speak up in their favor to God, against the devil and his agents, and to fellow human beings where necessary. Also, speak comforting and encouraging words to your children. No matter the wrong decisions they have made in the past, let them know that you believe in them and are looking forward to seeing them at the top. If some Christians were to be in Aaron's shoes, children did something wrong and are being questioned by a higher authority, they will turn their backs on those children. They are the ones that made a foolish choice, so they should deal with it. But what we should do as loving parents is stand by our children, work with them to get them out of the bad situation they are in, and then prayerfully correct them. There are stories of parents who sent their young daughters out into the streets and didn't care where they went or what dangers they were exposed to, all because the young ladies got pregnant outside marriage. Remember the story of the prodigal son in Luke chapter 15. His father didn't condemn him. He didn't chase him away in anger. Instead, he received him very well and gave him another chance. Psalm 103 verses 13 and 14. As a father has compassion on his children, 
So the Lord has compassion on those who fear him, for he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. That's the New International Version. David was a good example of a father who had compassion on his son. After the Lord told him that his son Solomon was the one chosen to build the Lord's house, David encouraged Solomon by making provision of building materials, speaking encouraging words to Solomon, soliciting help and support for Solomon from his people, and praying for Solomon, 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and chapter 29. While you are still alive, be there for your Ithama or Eliezer, that is the one who has not totally followed instructions, and also for your Solomon, the one who is still on the right path. The love you show to your children and the actions that that love pushes you to take may be all that is needed to get them to where they need to be. There are, however, times when the Lord actually wants you to show a particular child some tough love. Let the Holy Spirit guide you. May the Lord help us all in Jesus' name. Amen.